Hi everyone, can you all hear me? Oops, maybe I'm talking to myself. Hey Pushkar, sorry, yeah, I can hear you. Okay, perfect. Is that you, Brandon? Yeah, I thought so, okay, good. All right, cool. Can glad you could join. So now we have an admin on Zoom. So if there are any trolls, because the doc for the Zoom link was open for all. So I wasn't, I wouldn't be surprised if we end up having trolls, but hopefully you'll be able to kick them out. All right, cool. I think we have few more people trickling in. In the meantime, I'll share the agenda and if you all could just add yourself as an attendee, I would really appreciate it. There should be a section with uh, with today's date and a bullet for attendees. Do you want to um, also update this to YouTube as well? I, yeah, I think I received a couple of requests from folks who said they had a conflict, so they couldn't join, but they were hoping to catch a recording. Okay, let, so me, I, let me stream this so that it gets saved. Um, give me a second. Okay, perfect. One. Pushkar, it looks like the document doesn't have any access uh, for everyone. Oh, okay. Let me fix that. All right, uh, try now. Hey, what's up? Hey, Ron. Hey, everyone else who joined. I'm sharing the link to the meeting minutes again. Just if you could add yourself as an attendee while we're waiting for others, I would appreciate it. And anyone who wants to volunteer as a note taker, that is also very appreciated because folks may not be able to spend time to watch the recording or join today's meeting and they can quickly catch up on the notes. I'm having a bit of trouble with the, the streaming so I can just upload the, the video after. Yeah, that's fine. Thank you for trying though. If anyone doesn't have access to the doc, let me know.
All right, cool. So it's three minutes past uh, the clock. Uh, while people are adding their names, I think I'll start sharing my screen. Or maybe before that, we can just do a quick round of intros. I know there are some new folks, some familiar folks uh, from tax security meetings. So I'll quickly start with myself. I am I work in my day job as in VMware. I'm active in CNCF tax security for a couple of years now. CNCF uh, security white paper was my really first project that I contributed to uh, in 2020. And since been active uh, for whole of this year, really excited to where we are going and looking forward to working with all of you. Um, anyone else wants to start and quickly introduce, go for it. Maybe I can go next. Uh, hey everyone, I'm Rahul Jadav. Uh, I'm the co-founder and engineering lead for Aculox. Uh, we are working on runtime container security. Uh, you know, Cube Armor is one of the open source projects that we are working towards and it's, it's been included as CNCF Sandbox just yesterday. So very excited to be part of this team and uh, community, looking forward. Hello, next is the way. My name is Juan Vaida. I'm the CEO of Oxide. Uh, we are building a cloud native application security testing. And I actually joined the security tag right after the first security white paper was released. So I'm uh, looking forward to contribute. I can go next. Um, myself, Pratik Lotia. Um, I work uh, at Charter Communications, which is an internet service provider. Uh, outside this, I'm also part of the tax security controls, and uh, one of the things uh, which is a focus there is to, you know, uh, get information from the uh, uh, the white paper as well as the supply chain white paper, and you know, uh, put it into a, a different format. So one of my goals here is to also understand the white paper in a uh, you know in a, in a better way because we are having some challenges trying to get uh, proper data and you know mapping it. So that's why I'm here. Glad to join. Thank you. All right, I guess I can go next. Um, my name is Brandon. I'm a co chair of tech security. Um, just just gonna hang around here, you know, see how the good work being done, hopefully contribute, be able to contribute some stuff here. Um, for now, I will be acting as kind of like the tech representative since um, Emily is out. If not, you are in very good hands. I'm not worried. Thank, thank you, Brandon. Uh, also, no compulsion on doing intros. I know I am also shy sometimes, don't want to show my face or introduce myself. So it's completely okay to just listen in. Hello, everybody. My, my name is Mateusz Pruchniak. I am from Poland. Uh, I work in uh, one of the biggest banks in the Poland. So I am, uh, I am living the a great environment and I'm I'm responsible for migration to to the cloud so uh, the cloud native and security is the most important things for me now currently and I would like to contribute in this project nice to meet you and I will mute <laughs> thanks I guess I can go um hi everyone I'm Marina I'm a um, PhD student at NYU. I work on TUF and lots of other summit related projects. Um, and yeah, I'm excited to see what's going on here and kind of see if I can contribute. All right, go ahead, Axel. Yeah, okay, <laughs> thanks. Um, well, um, similar to Marina, I mean, I'm not a PhD student. I work at uh, Red Hat uh, on supply chain security stuff. I'm part of a team in the office of the CTO. Um, so working on stuff like SBOM, software supply, software supply chain security. Um, and I was, uh, I, I've been uh, helping out a bit with tag security. And so I was hoping to keep that involvement going uh, with the next working um, group in white paper. 
All right, cool. I think we got everyone. If I am not wrong. I'll just so, say hi real quick. Oh hi. yeah, Andres. Yes, you. Uh, you're my friend, so I forgot you. <laughs> <laughs> hi, I am Andres. I am Pushkar's friend. I am one of the TLs, one of the technical leaders for tax security. Here mostly to just listen and learn. Are you guys uh, hiking in the same area? <laughs> now this this background is actually from uh, the Pecos Wilderness in northern New Mexico, the the bottom end of the Rockies. If I if I move, you'll actually see me running through the trail. So yeah, the front of that picture, we did a seventy five mile fast packing trip over five days. Yeah, it was a a thunderstorm at this moment, so we're just like. Dropping down from 13,000 feet to avoid lightning, getting right at the like, yeah, the tree line. <laughs> that sounds really cool. All right, anyone else? Cool. If not, uh, let me share my screen. And uh, okay. I see. Yeah, that makes sense. All right. So can everyone see my screen? Is the font okay or should I increase a bit more? It looks good okay. from my perspective. Yeah, same thing. All right. Let me, maybe this is also better. Uh, okay, cool. So let's talk about the history. And I know some folks will find this like either boring or, oh, I know this already, but just for the uh, sake of folks who have joined today and are not very familiar with what happened in the past and why are we here. Uh, I would just wanted to give some historical context on this. So this is version two of the white paper, which means uh, uh, and implied that version one exists and that is true. So version one was published uh, almost one year back now in November 2020 uh, around KubeCon of uh, 2020. The whole idea behind publishing that and creating that was there was no single resource from a community that explained at a higher level what cloud native security means and what should anyone who is trying to go the cloud native way look for in terms of security. So because of that, Emily, who is one of our co-chairs, started this uh, project which led to a working group cre getting created for who worked on several months to get this paper published. And then after that, it just kind of sort of like the Avengers uh, timeline, multiple different deliverables started coming up after that. So we had security map that uh, Brandon has been leading. Then there has been a couple of more papers coming through like sub secure supply chain and serverless is coming up as well. Then there is a, the controls catalog that I think Pratik mentioned. We have some reference architectures coming in. There were some translations that happened of the paper and some audio recordings that are in progress. So we picked up a lot of pace and one single artifact really led to multiple things coming together. What also happened around this time in the last one year or so is like many things have changed from security perspective. So we have more focus on ransomware, more focus on secure supply chain. So it's really been, we are also trying to catch up with that. And that's why you see some of the deliverables focusing on that. We did one other interesting thing as part of the version one, which was retrospectives, where we went through the paper, uh, got feedback from a folks who read it, created a survey, shared it with people, got their feedback, and then updated and created some more artifacts like uh, what does applying secure default mean? Is there a high level reference that we can provide to the community? So all of these things have happened, but there is still a lot of work that remains, which will make the paper that as it exists today, uh, almost a year old now, better. And that's why we are here to make the existing version better and make it relevant and useful and to continue to update it so that next year when we publish version two, it will have all the most up-to-date relevant information with all of these different artifacts and deliverables 
tied in, linked to each other so that it is easier to consume. So a lot of information probably for all of you. So I'll pause for if you have any questions or question, uh, concerns or any missing context that I may not have shared. Uh, okay, Andres has his hand raised up. So go ahead, Andres. Koshkar, curious if you have a sense how many other publications have either linked or referenced the, the paper. We have tried to track those for the supply chain best practices paper, and it's like a good measure of, well, this other report from this company or like this industry publication is, is referencing our piece as an authoritative uh, publication. Curious if you have any sense of that. Yeah, so you're thinking like kind of like how many papers have uh, cited our paper so that we can kind of know like whether it's been really adopted or not. Right. I believe we don't have that metric today documented anywhere, but I think it's an excellent idea to have one. So probably one task of version two could be that where we start collecting that information and I would be interested to know like how we gathered that information for secure supply chain paper and kind of use the same processes for this one. So I'm just awesome. adding a note here. Yeah, um, it's, it's been a lot of manual collection of like we stumble upon a blog and we, we find the mention there for a citation. Uh, we could probably come up with a particular link to encourage people if you're gonna cite this use this link so we know from redirects yeah yeah I, that makes sense i think um, let's I think, go ahead uh, i was gonna say uh, it sounds like this is a generic thing perhaps and just um pretty open issue there may be some folks in the community there may some know some tools that we can use for that as well yeah awesome okay cool that works as well any any other questions and I know some people who have written version one, if I missed anything you want to add, feel free to do that as well. All right, okay. I, I have one, one more question. Go ahead. I... go ahead, go ahead. So we call this a white paper and well, a lot of us work for vendors and like marketing white papers have, have a particular connotation if you're trying to position something and yes it's not like sales collateral it's actually like a piece of technical documentation to, to support that i and white papers have particular formats and structures um it's somewhat like a white paper but i think it's diverged and we have like different elements of different types of technical documentation in there I don't know if, if we still feel, we don't need to answer this right now, if what, what we end up coming from this revision or iteration, if it's still really a white paper or we're just carrying that on because the previous one was a white paper. So just throwing it out there for, for consideration that it might end up being something else than we're calling it. And are we really attached to white paper or not? Maybe we wanna call it something else or just drop it together to be like the cloud native security document or the cloud native security book from tech security. Yeah, yeah, I, 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 I like that idea. We, I see like almost a poll coming up on Slack for all of us to vote on different alternative names. And then one of them could be the white paper name itself as and keep it as is on some other alternatives. Maybe that will give some ideas on whether it makes sense to rename it. Okay, so I can just note this down in case we want to not lose track of this. All right, cool. Any anything, any other comment or questions? Cool, okay. So if not, I'll just start discussing some logistics and what it really would look like in terms of timeline. 
So we are in almost mid November right now. I expect many folks will have holidays planned. I have a holiday planned in December as well. Uh, so we'll keep it the overall work and expectation from everyone until end of this year, a bit lighter on the lighter side. And we'll really, the hope is we'll start getting more traction and more people being able to contribute uh, starting next year in Jan. So the idea is we'll get the first draft ready by end of Jan, then the first round of reviews from other TAG members who will join us shortly in our regularly scheduled meeting uh, by in, in a month after Jan, so end of Feb. And then we'll essentially freeze the edits, that direct edits that we make and open it up for everybody else, essentially in the community to give feedback, uh, add more comments, see where we have missed something and where they can share and contribute. So we'll open it up for a month or so. Then that gives us after that feedback, maybe another three weeks, four weeks to wrap up that those comments, reviews, uh, more or less finalize the document. And then when KubeCon U 2022 happens, which is in May uh, of next year, we'll start creating like last time, some blogs that explain and announce this version to explain what changes happen and then publish it in our uh, repo, repo, which is CNCF tax security uh, with the version two label essentially uh, with, and then the paper will be ready. And then we'll potentially after KubeCon start a retrospective like we did for version one later. So that's about the general timeline. Any questions on that? Sounds good. I see some head nods, so it looks good. Okay. Uh, all right. Uh, also, if you want, feel free to ask questions on the chat. I'll also keep track of the chat so we don't miss anything. I know some folks are unable to voice uh, or, use, or use their mic today. Okay. So now you'll realize, uh, like I have, that generally like the deliverables for version two to be ready are these, but we will potentially keep adding more as we come up with more ideas. So one ask from all of you who have joined today or who are interested, look at the deliverables, look at the version one paper. Uh, oh, maybe one question. Does everyone know where the version one paper exists? Okay, so if not, let me quickly open it up. So this is our tax security repo. This is security white paper. This is where all of the white paper related stuff exists. And the version one paper, if I'm not wrong, is here. Yep. So this is in Markdown. We had a Google Doc initially that we worked on and then it was converted to Markdown. So this is where it exists today. Uh, I see something on chat. Okay, so thank you, Brandon. I just posted it. Yeah. Okay, so that's the basically the last update that we made was in this one. So now, Going back to this, uh, the the idea here for all of the deliverables was first, like if you know or have any other ideas which we may have missed in terms of, hey, we should add this or hey, we should revisit this part of the paper after you look at V version one or if you already looked at it, add a comment on the issue and uh, share what you think might be a good option to add. So that will allow us to kind of define the scope in the next month or so, where we'll be like, okay, we know what to do. And then as we iterate more in the next coming months, we may change a bit, but at least we'll have a basic initial scope plan. So that's may, the main ask from all of you. And the second, maybe couple of other points I wanted to discuss was uh, logistics on contributions. So the way I look at this is each deliverable, uh, I'll try to convert it into a individual GitHub issue. And then whoever wants to take ownership of that can, uh, can just raise their hand on the issue and then we'll assign that to you. And then 
that person would be responsible for uh, completing that specific deliverable uh, in the V2. So we'll do that for all of these. And the second piece of logistics is really Markdown versus Google Doc. So today, as we discussed and saw, it's in Markdown. And there are really two ways to, I can think of, and I'm happy to hear more from others is, we could either use GitHub as is and create pull request on this, uh, maybe a copy of this paper uh, with V2 and create pull request on that and make our edits in GitHub itself. Second alternative is converting the markdown to a Google doc for quicker iteration. And then we can have discussions there and have more uh, comments and maybe people who are E, not very familiar with Markdown or GitHub workflow, it might be easier to contribute through Google Doc. We could also do both, but I want to hear from everyone if anyone has a strong preference on either side. I, I think there was also, I'm not sure whether you mentioned this, but um, there's also like um, someone recommended HackMD, I think, which you can do yeah. the Markdown and do comments as well. Yeah. Yeah, I, I definitely think, I think the HackMD might give us the most convenient way to update and it will, the Google Doc comment workflow and resolve threads workflow is very similar to that as well in HackMD. So it might work out okay uh, there. And any other feedback or question, uh, thoughts about this? Other, yeah, um, other than source, sorry, Axel. No, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Okay. Other, other than what we author as the source, we probably actually, and I chatted about this in, in the supply chain working group, output into other formats people might consume, might be more consumption friendly. So like output to EPUB and Mobi. And yeah, like sometimes reading a markdown if you're in your phone, like, or using the GitHub mobile app ain't great. So we probably want to generate other other forms of artifacts. Whatever we decide on working the source on, just making sure we convert it to HTML and EPUB and Mobi, et cetera. Back to you, Axel. Sorry. Yeah, second. No, that that's very good, Andres. I think it's it's very it's good to think about how people are actually going to read this because it's quite a bit of a beast to read. So you know we want to make it um, easy to to go through. Um, what I was going to say, what, what um, a few things. Uh, we sh I don't think we should have two systems at the same time. Same time. I think that's just going to make it really hard. So we need to pick one. That being said, it shouldn't be such a hard decision because we can we can change. It's not very hard if we if we realize you know after a month that the system we chose just doesn't do it for us. We can switch. Um, I'm I'm quite happy at the idea of trying something like HackMD or Hedge MD, uh, Hedge whatever Hedge Doc. It's the the other fork of it. Uh, anyway, point is. I think that's a very nice way of getting like to directly working on something that is closer to the source document we want, which is Markdown and from which we can easily generate whatever we need. So uh, that sounds like a good idea, but yeah, bearing in mind, I think that's something that's worth reminding, but all these process things should be like scaffolding to help you build something. Like if it gets in the way, then, you know, then you should change stuff and not hesitate to change it. So let's let's. I would suggest I go. I like what you're suggesting. Let's try hack and D. Um, yeah, hack and D for a bit, and then you know reconvene and see if that works for us. Yeah, that I I like being kind of agile in terms of switching different ways of doing things because initially in one of the things I was working on. I started with HackMD, but people who wanted to contribute weren't familiar with HackMD. So it took a while for them to figure out how to add a comment, how to give feedback. And then when I switched to Google Docs, suddenly I got like 10, 15 people commenting. So that, that may happen or may not happen, but it's worth at least trying out different things that are convenient for folks. Okay, Andres, go ahead. Yeah, one other observation is for some folks who, who get hyper-focused and are, are cranking out content, I've, I've noticed they, they tend to be more comfortable working on their own, on their own whatever, like text editor. And then uh, 
giving that to to the rest of the group to slot it in or, or merge it with where it best fits but calling out that there's flexibility of hey if you're, if you're writing something feel free to use whatever whatever works for you whatever's your workflow and then it can all be merged in some people have a hard time well if, if i'm working on this document and there's like 10 eyes watching me type it can be a little bit unnerving so if you're good with that cool if, if you want to work on your own like i think it's it's good to call it out yeah i i i i think I, that's a good call out because maybe most of the deliverables are so loosely coupled with each other we you can just use any of your favorite editors write up whatever you want to write for that deliverable and then just copy that and paste it to whatever we are we have our, as our source document it's with hackmd or google doc or whatever we end up deciding so that is totally fine and this is where i can come in and help like if folks are really don't want to learn hackmd for this small project and really your 99% of work is done somewhere else let me know and uh, i'll kind of be the intermediate person who will, who can convert from that format to this but hopefully people don't choose 10 different formats uh, then that would be kind of make me miserable but we'll probably have two or three that will end up uh, converging on Cool. So plain text is fine. <laughs> Hand it over. Yeah, Google Docs is plain text pretty much. So that yeah. works. Okay, cool. Any Anything else? Any general feelings, thoughts, comments that come up? We're all very excited. <laughs> all right, cool. So yeah, so please, uh, I like the jokes about formatting, but it's making me nervous. So keep formatting to maybe two, three things, hopefully, uh, and then we'll be okay. But yeah, it's it's fine. If if you prefer something, we'll figure out a way to do it. I think Frederick is being very serious <laughs> as he writes in <laughs> Yeah, I did get some feedback that, hey, have you considered LaTeX from some few more folks as well in the past? So yeah, maybe in future. Uh, yeah. All right. Uh, That's how you tell whether someone someone is versed in it, is LaTeX versus LaTeX, <laughs> judged by the, the pronunciation. Overall, overall timeline, do you think there's any risks of, well, we we go off for the holidays if we celebrate the holidays and it, it might be like a little bit of a slump to get back and pick up speed early january yeah i think it's it will probably be natural for all of us to get into a slump next month and also be natural for all of us to pick up ourselves in january because we'll all be out uh, for a while so mostly it will work the one of the things i did want to share was I, I'm planning to create all of these deliverables into individual GitHub issues before I leave for my holiday, which is first week of December. So in case folks are working and I have worked in holiday season in the past and want to contribute and start early, please do uh, just pick up any of the GitHub issues that I'll create in maybe a couple of weeks from now and say, hey, I want to work on it and start drafting your document in whichever format you want, keep it ready. And when all of us are back, we'll catch up on that and start working on it again. But yeah, so we'll have to definitely pick up ourselves, uh, but I didn't want to also wait for us to have a scoping and brainstorming in January, which would have then made it a bit uh, risky for us to be ready by KubeCon. So hopefully we'll have scoping and brainstorming done by the, by next few weeks or so and then it's just about heads down focusing on what we need to update and then we are going according to this timeline there's a question from axel in the chat okay perfect thank you so let's see have we discussed how often we will meet? Yeah, so that's a good call. I think Brandon also raised it to me a few days back. 
my thinking was we can something that worked at least last time when we were working on version one was we meet uh, every other week starting january uh, almost the same time as this time which is before our weekly tax security meeting and we just catch up on does anyone need help uh, have is, has anyone made any progress do we need uh, somebody to pick up a deliverable and then also gives us an opportunity to welcome new members who haven't joined today or who haven't showed interest yet so that's what i'm thinking at least for jan feb march april we can keep with that cadence and then as we wind down we can start maybe meeting a bit less and less and then hopefully we'll be done by me does that sound good for everyone yeah i think so yeah yeah okay cool and we don't have to meet full hour also we can probably finish sometimes in 30 minutes or 45 minutes and that's fine Just a quick question. Do we have anyone from Asia time zone here? Oh yeah, good call. Anyone non-US non time zone? Yeah, I'm from India, Bangalore. All right, cool. I am from Poland, so we have <laughs> nine hours difference. <laughs> oh, okay. It does, is, does, is this time convenient for both of you? Yeah, it's... Uh, it's it's 6 p.m. in Poland, so it's after work. <laughs> it's quite good. 7 p.m. here, but I think it's good. All also right. Me too. Another way of asking this is are there, I mean, I think there are, but are there people, PST, I, it's literally in your in Pacific, a West Coast US, it's literally in your name, Pushkar. So it just says PST. So that's the answer to my question. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So I think so looks like the time generally works. But again, for folks who for whom it's very late in the night, don't feel obliged to join the meetings. I think like in our tax security meetings, we expect most of the work to be done outside the meetings anyway, and mostly a sync. So we'll just continue to do the same for this as well. And uh, I'll be I'll one promise from my side is I'll try to be very active on Slack once we uh, meet again after the holidays and even now until I'm available. Or if I'm not available, I'll make sure like I put it in bold and on status everywhere that I'm not available when I'm I'll be back. So all of you are aware. And uh, one important async channel for us to continue to communicate is tax security white paper. So this channel exists. We have used that in the past for version one. We can continue to use that. If if any one of you is not part of Cloud Native Slack uh, already, please join uh, and go to this channel, join that. We'll mostly always have these kind of discussions there. All the meeting minutes recordings will also be shared there. So this is that's the best way to keep track in case you can't make, make a meet or, or make it to any of the meetings. Hey, Pushkar, a, a thought just popped in my head. Uh, just trying to like streamline the publication process where we find the most toilets back and forth between authors and an editorial review from CNCF. Yeah. So if any of you work with technical writers that are looking to make a contribution to open source, reach out to them. It'd be great if you can get, if we can get folks, if we shift left that edit and like people who a lot of us are practitioners and we're not professional writers sure we, we can communicate but if, if we get people like who who know how to write really well and and can keep us like making sense and not just like overloaded on on substance but not so much on, on the delivery it would be great and a lot of us work with technical writers or people who just write well in general yeah, plus one, big plus one on that. I think for me, most of what I've written, it reads good only because somebody has looked at it and added their pixie dust and sparkles, which really make it stand out and make sense. So definitely agree. If you know anyone who is good and who is looking forward to open source contributions, this is probably 
as good at it is as as an opportunity as it gets. Yeah, professional wordsmithers are are needed or yeah. want it at least to be great. Yeah, I agree. All right, I'll stop sharing and open it up for any further questions. We have a few minutes if people want to just chat about some history or some questions that we may not have talked about before. Um, real quick, I think you were uh, referring to, hey, let like everyone should check out the deliverables and add comments there. I don't know if you got a chance to complete your statement there. Uh, well, do you want to? Yeah, so my goal is the bullet, the check bullets or checklists that we have in the deliverables. I'll convert each of them to a GitHub issue in our tax security repo in next couple of weeks. So week after Thanksgiving, you should have the issues ready. Uh, and if any one of you is going to work or during holidays or just get bored of enjoying life and wants to start working. <laughs> so go for it. Pick up an issue, just add your comment and say like, hey, I want to start working on this and just start working on it. And then based on what you end up coming up with when we meet again in January, we'll catch up on whoever has already started working on stuff and start creating uh, or bringing all of it together. Seems like in the beginning, we'll start with HackMD, but for individual de deliverables, like Andres mentioned, if you want to pick any of your favorite editors or formats, go for it. And then once we all come together, we can figure out like how to merge and converge all of that together. Does that make sense? Yeah, sorry, I probably didn't realize I had not finished my thought about that. Oh, yeah, that's perfect. Okay, cool. Uh, I see a couple of chat messages here. Is there a tax security calendar I can subscribe to for the meeting invites? I'll probably let Brandon answer, but I believe we have a CNCF list that we can use to get subscribed, but I'm not sure whether it subscribes to the calendar. So um, traditionally we've put all the, the meetings and like all this other working group meetings on the CNCF main calendar. Um, so you can subscribe to that. Unfortunately, uh, it's a package deal where it comes with all the other events. <laughs> um, yeah, thanks, Andrews, for, for linking that one. Yeah, so I, I I haven't found a good way myself to to do it. I just import the entire calendar. It comes with a lot of stuff that I don't really care about. But yeah, um, right now, that's that's one way to do it. But that is a good point, though. I think that maybe we can start creating our own. Yeah. Um, do you mind opening up an issue about that? <laughs> and then we can we can try and work it out. That's actually a good, that's a very good suggestion. Yeah. Th thank you, Savita. And probably if I'm not wrong, you're coming to on this topic from Kubernetes SIG calendar perspective because I it works really well from my experience because you have a Google group for a Kubernetes SIG. And if you subscribe to that, all your calendar meetings for that sake come up automatically in a day or two on your uh, email client. Mm -hmm. So I think that works really well where you, if you want to focus on a, a SIG or two SIGs, you only get calendar inverts for those two SIGs instead of like all the SIGs together. <laughs> okay. So yeah, something like that might actually help. Yeah, an approach to explore is we can create a sub list on their tax security for this work group. And anyone here can create an ICS invite and just forward it to that mailer, and we we accept it. Right. Yeah, that that could be another way. The very lame and basic thing a uh, way mm -hmm. I you do is I just create an a, a one person invite on my calendar, and add my GitHub tax security link for the meeting minute meeting minutes uh, document in that. So at least I know like, okay, I have this meeting in at 10 o'clock on Wednesday, but yeah, I think overall, if we make it better for everyone, it will help a lot. So I definitely agree, Savita. And thank you for volunteering to open an issue. All 
right any any other thoughts questions good stuff this is awesome yes i i am definitely excited as well uh, one of the go- one of the reasons i would be excited to come back from the holidays that's for sure Awesome. So, are we meeting yeah, again um, before before the end of the year, or we're, we're gonna just do it asynchronously? Yeah. So, good. I think I want to open this question really to all of you. My thinking and my perspective, and I'm happy to explore that and change it. Is considering next week is Thanksgiving, and the week after, I am working, but after that, I'm again on PTO for about until end of the year. i was thinking either we meet the week after thanksgiving one more time for folks who couldn't join today to give them a chance to join again and kind of repeat the same thing that we did today or uh, if we don't have in we we've got pretty much everyone today and people are able to discuss this as sync we could also skip the meeting the week after thanksgiving and just meet the first week of jan what does everyone think Bye, Excel. Thank you for joining. We can put a poll in the the Slack group. Yeah, yeah. That's that's a good point. So I can do a poll on this. Uh, but if you have any direct feedback on this, let me know. Thank you, Andres. I think having a quick think up uh, is not a bad idea. Even if it's just a fifteen minute, twenty minute call. just make sure you know everyone has the right links and all the uh, necessary information so yeah maybe we can still have a call and maybe not everyone is able to join but whoever can join and yeah okay i got it i see a thumbs up from ron uh, and i think it might be good opportunity to also walk through the github issue i would have created by then for all of us and then people can go live, be live and pick it up at during the meeting if they want so yeah i like that idea so i'll i'll start sharing the same way like i did this time uh, on github when we are meeting next pretty much probably we'll uh, use this same time again uh, a week after thanksgiving and uh, meet uh, with the same google doc link same zoom link uh, and then i'll also make sure to put it on the tax security white paper slack so that people who are following slack and not github can also keep track of it Okay, cool. Uh, I guess that's it. If I'll last call for any feedback, comments, thoughts. Otherwise, we'll wrap up. And for folks who are joining the regularly scheduled meeting, we'll see you in fourteen minutes. Mm, okay, I'll take that as we are happy, excited to meet again, and uh, ho- hopefully, all the questions have been answered. So again, thanks everyone for joining. Uh, if something comes up later and you want to ask that, use the tax security white paper channel or ask the question on the GitHub issue that we discussed, and then we'll we'll figure out an answer and we'll discuss that more. All right. Awesome. With that, yes. thank yeah. you very much. Bye bye. Thank you everyone. Thank you. With thank you, Vishka. Yeah. See you soon for folks joining later. Yeah. Bye. Thank you very much. Bye. Have a nice weekend.